Shaggers legends, mate, I need to be very, very quick with this one. I am currently in Sheffield off the back of one of the most ridiculous games of football I've ever seen in my entire life, mate. Ever. Ever. Trevor. <laughs> to go 3 1 down and bring it back the way we did. Fairy tale sort of stuff, mate. Fairy tale sort of stuff. It had the same sort of like links and the same sort of like nuances as Liverpool away, mate. Even though we lost it 4 3. And we could have easily have lost this one as well, mate. I need to sit down. I need a drink. I need to get my voice back. I need all the rest that I can get, mate. And anyone that was in that away end as well. Mixture of emotions. The first half was one of the most boring things that we've ever seen ever from Fulham. If we're going back to day dot, mate. We're going back to day dot from the beginning of time. From when, from, from before football started in 1992, mate. It was an absolute joke. It was ridiculous what we witnessed. In the first half, there were so many opportunities for both us and Sheffield United to nick something. Sheffield United couldn't hit a barn door. Ollie McBurney and Ben Berrett and Diaz were absolutely useless in that first half. And Fulham, the back line was unbelievable for the first 45 minutes. And then it just went to utter, utter doggy poo poo. Dog poo. Dog poo. Awful. I was making some notes at half time, just being like, this is the worst 45 minutes I've ever seen, not just from Fulham, but a uh, football match in general. I, I, I was like, what, the, what is the point in this trip coming all the way up to Sheffield? I'm going to Manchester now because I'm reporting on the game tomorrow, City versus Arsenal. So that's the reason why I linked everything in with this. As soon as Sheffield United went 1-0 up, which was just a joke, to be honest with you, Tosin and Bassey, who I thought were unbelievable in that first half. Bassey, I'm not really going to give him any criticism. Tosin, though, man, that first, that first goal gets put under pressure, passes it. It's just a hospital pass into the middle. Nothing on it. And then Sheffield United are able to break from it and they score. Wonderful. Wonderful. Fantastic. Great. I can't even remember some of the goals, mate, because the whole thing was an absolute... You know, we just have one of those out-of-body experiences. That's what I had this afternoon. It's exactly that. It's exactly that. Sorry for not making sense. I just feel as if I'm living in an alternate reality right now. And I think you can understand what I mean if you're in that away end, mate. Some of... Oh, just Ollie McBurney, the most unbearable bloke in the Premier League. There needs to be a ban on him and Chris Wilder being in the Premier League for at least about five years. He may have scored and he got a great assist outside of the boot to Ben Berrish and Diaz. But at the same time, mate, he runs around. He runs around like he's just pooed his pants, like he's got severe diarrhoea. It's, it's embarrassing stuff, if you ask me, mate. He doesn't influence the game whatsoever. And Sheffield United fans will say, yeah, but he got a goal and assist, didn't he? Yeah, he managed to get a goal and assist against you. He's League One standard, and I even think that's disrespectful to League One, to be honest with you. Sheffield United fans giving it the big one as well. I loved it. I loved it. In that away end, mate. Yeah, they, they know their fate, and obviously they're taking it so seriously, but they need to realise that we're, they're one of the worst teams that has ever graced the Premier League. It's not a good thing. You're a laughing stock and you should be laughing and booing your own players. I don't know why they were kicking off at full time at the referee. I thought the referee was absolutely shocking towards Fulham, mate. Dreadful. Joao Palinha in the middle as well, mate, got an important goal. And I've not even come on to the goal of the day in the Premier League. I've, I've not seen any, any of the other goals in the Premier League this afternoon because obviously I've been at Bramall Lane. But... Rodrigo Munez is mustard. Rodrigo Munez is the real deal, mate. That scissor kick, and I'm not saying this just because I'm a Fulham fan, that scissor kick is one of the best goals I've ever seen in the flesh. In the flesh. Ever. I've seen Brian Ruiz score from 30 yards out away at Reading, hit the crossbar and go in. I've seen Clint Dempsey score three kicks against Sunderland. And now I've seen Rodrigo Munez Score a scissor kick, so perfectly timed. Adama Traore, perfectly weighted pass. I think it was Adama because he got an assist. Instant impact off the bench. Him and Bobby Deckel Dover Reed as well, but that weighted pass going into the middle just peels away, peels away from the defender. And he's got so much space, 
to do some acrobatics. If this was the Olympics, mate, if this was the Olympics and we were doing gymnastics right now, it'd get a gold medal straight up. Brazil have got a gold medal. Brazil have got a brand new number nine, mate. If Richarlison doesn't make it to the Copper America, which I imagine that he probably will, and we know everything that Richarlison's going through right now, if for whatever reason Richarlison doesn't go to the Copper America, and I think even if he does, I think that um, Rodrigo Munez needs to be on there. And he needs to be on that plane to the Copper America. Because, what is it, eight goals in eight now? He went a bit missing in the first half, mate. He went a bit missing. I'm not going to say that he had a brilliant 90 minutes. But that second half, that header, that would have been one of the best headers ever in Premier League history. Such a tight angle. Such a tight angle. It has to move his body in such a weird way and hits the inside of the post. It was so, so, so unlucky. A lot of people were a bit disgruntled, of course, when we went 4-1 uh, down, but it was ruled out because of offside or whatever happened. I could, mate, it's impossible to work things out, even when you watch the highlights as well. You can't work out what's going on the pitch. As a spectator in the stands, you're completely left for dead. One minute it's going to be a red card for serious foul play, the next minute it's offside. You can't really work it out. Second half, Chris Wilder just fired a rocket up there, asked mate, and Ben Barris and Diaz was... Um, it was unbelievable. It's unbelievable. There's something about long hair that's not in a hairband or a ponytail just flowing. I swear is he Villarreal. I'd love it if Fulham took a punt on him. And we were linked to him before he went to Villarreal when he had that brilliant season in the season where we came up where he was with Blackburn, mate. I would give a lot. If he played in a quality side like ours, I think he'd be classed down that left wing, mate. It'd be unbelievable. He's such a good playmaker and he causes havoc. Timothy Castagna, especially in that first half, I think got found out a little bit, mate. Got a little bit found out. Right, there's a train from London, going to London St Pancras from Sheffield right now. Excuse the noise. I imagine there's a very, very high number of Fulham fans there. Absolutely buzzing. Hey, listen, it's a draw. It's a draw, it's a one all. but do you know what it feels like? It feels like a victory in a very weird way, mate in a very, very bizarre way. Right, man of the match, I'm just gonna wait for this train to go past. I'm so sorry for the noise pollution. It is so, so noisy. It's that bloody Thomas the Tank over here. Um, mate, I thought Andreas Pereira was unbelievable. The intricate passes that he made inside and out with Robinson going in, he was such a difference maker. And I was saying to Sammy, because I did the Fulhamish quick take as well, when you're so close and you see, obviously, him making those little balls inside and out, going into the box, if it's an overlap or underlap with Robinson, almost doesn't look like it's got anything of it, anything on it, sorry, and it's not going to really make it to its selected destination. It's always perfectly weighted. Yes, there's always criticisms that he's holding on to the ball for far too long and doesn't shoot. I guess that's just really like a lack of confidence. We saw that before the international break when he had two one-on-ones uh, just before we went away. I can't remember. I think that was against Brighton and we could have beaten them about 6-0 that day. But as a whole, is there anything that I've missed? Is there anything that I haven't discussed? Bobby Deckard over Reed as well, scoring with his second touch. Class, brilliant, unbelievable. I think a lot of these players, especially in that first half, were a bit leggy. Did they have some Nestle... Easter eggs, yeah? Were they just thinking about that beach in Ibiza? So you've got to think about like Harry Wilson as well. I don't believe that he got on the pitch, but he was never really going to feature unless it was right at the end because he played, what, 120 minutes for Wales in the week, went to a penalty shootout as well. I'm so glad that we clawed it back because I tell you this right now, it would have been absolutely disastrous if we lost that game 3-1. And we wouldn't have deserved to have lost that game 3-1 as well. So many chances that we should have put away, especially... Chances going across the goal mouth as well. Sasha Lukic blocked Tom Kenny right at the death as well. We lived a fairy tale, to be honest with you, mate. And if Kenny would have scored right at the death as well, that would have been absolute limbs, mate. Limbs, I tell you. Limbs, 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 limbs. How many more times can I say limbs? I'm not even going to bother. Um, I think that's absolutely everything. Willian, unbelievable again. Just makes so much time for himself. And at the age of 35, 36, and I've said it oh, so many times before, it just makes everything look so easy. So easy. Right, Shaggers, Legends, please remember if you're new here, still a massive solid subscribe to the channel just down below. Leave us a comment. Were you at Bramall Lane? How did you? Were you one of the people that left? Were you one of the people that left? 
because you should never ever leave a football game. I can understand at the 4 1, you wanted to get the train back to London or wherever, but you should never ever leave a football game. I'm going to be back in the proper setup uh, on Monday, working tomorrow up in Manchester, but mate, what a comeback, what a day, the best goal I've ever seen in the flesh. Goodbye.